system, I could go to five different producers mm -hmm. and get five times the amount that I'm actually legally allowed to get. Right. There's no mechanism in place for double doctoring. They can go, they can come to my clinic and see the doctors and get a prescription, let's say, if they meet the criteria. And or from there, go down to a walk-in clinic and then another walk-in clinic and see the doctor and he'll give you a three, five grand, whatever. So it's a revolving door. That's a glaring error because, I mean, if this system is being changed to wipe out abuse, mm -hmm. it seems that you can still abuse the system. Well, I, I'm telling you this. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be ignorant here, but I'm saying as a, as a CEO, I have to look at all the different aspects here, what's going on and how that could potentially affect the company. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I'm saying I'm getting doubts about maybe pursuing this any further because the cost runs are going to be so high that the average person will not be able to afford it. They can't. It's too much. It's too, the cost factors for the regulations alone, which you got to meet, Mm -hmm. Like it took us close to a month to figure this paperwork out. It took us a month to get this in order. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was, lawyers don't even know what to do with this. Mm -hmm. This is new, everything is new. It's a learning curve for everybody. So it's not a question of not being this or that government or this person or this tree, but when people make it personal, mm -hmm. then I have an issue with that. So if the eyes aren't open and people are thinking outside the box and any corporation, I'm sorry, I'm not the federal government. I don't like to lose money. Mm -hmm. I like to make money. If I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, but I'm not using other people's money to waste it. I have reservations as to the program, as to the current licensing, as to the old program. When, how's that? There's people that aren't doing what everybody else or a lot of other people might be doing by growing excess and selling it, things like this. Well, that guy that has two or three lights and only doing his 10 or 15 plants, I feel bad for them. Because these people are on disability, it gives them something to do, a little garden to maneuver. They won't even entertain the thought of like a U-Haul storage system where you've got 500 people in that one unit, mm -hmm. and there you go, you're monitoring it, you've got 20,000 out there, you go split it up. Mm -hmm. So there's other ways of controlling it. Mm -hmm. But when the federal government themselves start approving 200 gram a day licenses, 150 gram a day licenses, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry you people, but 200 grams a day is unconceivable. I can't see it. And if this is going on, where's the abuse coming from now? The federal government's allowing it to happen when they should know it's an almost impossible to consume all of that in one day. There you go. That's 200 grams. This is what somebody has to consume in one day? I'm sorry. But it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. So why authorize such a big license? That's a thousand plants. Mm -hmm. So the government doesn't know this? So you can splice this any way you want, and this is just the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking to let us do extractions so that we can offer this material to people in, in need, where they can take the recipe book and the butter and bake, and they can consume this with food products that are natural and organic for you, that have no side effects, they're not going to hurt your liver, they're not going to hurt your kidneys, and it's a food product. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to fall under the Food and Drug Act. That's 1,800 pages of regulations. So Even more regulations. It, it's a, yeah. Exactly. It just gets deeper and deeper into the regulatory reform of trying to control something that's pretty much uncontrollable. You, you're not going to be able to. Uh, you can't fully control it. No. You don't no. I think you can't control the, the off-sale of tobacco. You can't control the off-sale of alcohol. You can't control the sale of pharmaceutical medication that people are selling on the street. You can't control that. Mm -hmm. And you know, you expect to control marijuana. I even know it was estimated to be a $20 billion a year industry, but that's when it was being shipped into the States, where we were supplying 8 to 10% of the marijuana in the States. Now we're not, because the States has their own now. They, they don't need us anymore. That's where the import licenses come in and the export licenses. So eventually, everything that I was saying, that it's going to go globally, it's going to be a worldwide epidemic, mm -hmm. if they want to call it an epidemic, I don't. I call it medication. Mm -hmm. And if it's done in a proper manner, it will help a lot of people. So unfortunately, the abuse now will move from the growers to the users, although maybe some of the users slash growers were also using the system before. Mm -hmm. So Well, think about it. You have 22,000 or roughly 20,000. Yeah, apparently 20, now it's 24,000. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever. So 24,000 I mean, growers that were never there before. Right. Now, the police have a concern 
Fire marshals have a concern. The public safety has a concern. Well, okay, they tried, it didn't work, it got abused, but then stop and think of who let it get abused. Mm -hmm. If the federal government was doing their part in regulating it and controlling it and monitoring as best as they could, yeah, there was always going to be glitches in every format. Mm -hmm. Nothing's perfect. And that's part and parcel to the problem here. If it's used in the medical form, that's one thing. But you have compassion clubs out there that the mayor, the chief of police, they know that they're illegal, but they're letting them go. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You've got people online. Mm -hmm. Okay? These are hurdles that I have to overcome too. Mm -hmm. How am I going to dispense when you have these outlets that are illegal and functioning? So that's a concern. That's going to be your competition. Well, I'm. How you call it? Comp well, it's illegal. What I'm it's doing illegal. is legal. Yeah, I've got right. proper licensing, yeah. proper yeah. everything. But okay, I got to let it go because whatever they want to do, they can. I can't, and I won't go to the police. It's like the movie. Say, hey, they're running it's like the movie industry, right? They sell legal DVDs, but then they've got to compete with the illegal DVD market. That's I mean, something that's that if people keep growing, yeah. they're going to lose their house. Remember, Bill C-10 is an yeah. effect. So if you're growing marijuana illegally, be prepared to lose your house. That's all I'm saying. And mm -hmm. I tell her, please don't do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call and, and a year from now to tell me that you're still growing and you need help with a lawyer or something because what's going to happen is I can't help you. Mm -hmm. I told you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because the first Example that's going to be set, people might wake up mm -hmm. and say, God, I don't want to lose my family, I'm going to lose my house, and lose everything for the sake of some medical marijuana, okay, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll go from 22,000 down to 15,000 to 12, and eventually, mm -hmm. yeah, the program will stop. But a lot of people are going to be ignorant and say, I don't give a shit, I'm still going to grow because they believe it's a right. It's not a right, mm -hmm. it's a privilege mm -hmm. to grow your own. And that's part and parcel because legally it's not a right. If you go through the Constitution, your charter of rights, yeah. you had a privilege. And because that privilege got abused maybe by more than one person, that's enough. Yeah. And that's all it took. There's a few people to make a big difference, which ended up making a big mess for the, the little guy who was just on welfare, has just two or three lights, doing a small little operation, mm -hmm. nothing big, nothing in excess. Mm -hmm. and that's why. And because there's no subsidization, but I have a problem with that too, because mm -hmm. without subsidization, how are they going to afford it, number one? Right. Number two, why don't they subsidize? They subsidize methadone. Yeah. Methadone is another heroin addiction. So by subsidizing methadone, and currently I've heard that they've alleviate, uh, pain, stopped paying for the Oxycontins. They're only going to pay for the genetic version, which the genetic version can be crushed up, mm -hmm. like the old ones. Mm -hmm. The new ones that are gelled, they can't. Now they're going to be able to consume that in other ways too. So there's a lot to really, really sit back as 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 a CEO and look at where this is going to go and how much it's going to take, how long is it going to take, and the money aspect. So for you to make okay, so as a business owner now, for you to to break even or make your profit or whatever you need to do, you would have to sell it between eight and fifteen dollars per well, gram. Is yes, it? yeah, per, per gram. gram. Because and then the shipping cost is occurred by the patient. Right. So they would then be charged additional. Oh, well, sure. They yeah. have to pay for the product. Yeah. Then they got to pay primarily for like any other business. Yeah. They got to pay for okay. My overhead is this. I'm mm -hmm. gonna take a portion of this, portion of that, and that's how you come up to your your dollar figure per gram. So okay. So on the street right now, you said you can get it for about a dollar, dollar fifty. A dollar. On the street? street? Yeah. On, on the, the street, street right now, believe it or not, in British Columbia right now. Well, let's talk about let's talk about Toronto. Okay. okay. You're Just looking at approximately a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a pound right now, which is approximately. So how much per gram? Uh, so approximately three dollars a gram. So three dollars a gram that's right now. That's current. You can purchase product on the street at that price, but and for medicinal marijuana right now in Toronto, like it's if you up get to through it's a, up the Compassion Clubs are up to fifteen dollars a gram. It's up to fifteen dollars yeah. right now. Yeah. Wow. Up to and there's ranges from mm -hmm. eight to fifteen, okay. and different varieties. For example, different types like. Uh, the OG Kush will be more expensive. But the compassion clubs aren't legal. So well, through a, they're not. Through a legal, so right now through a legal grower. Can't. You can't. 
there's the program isn't in effect yet. And then no, 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 no. But I mean, uh, through a designated person. Uh, through a designated charge, person, yeah. what they're doing? What like, would I, they charge? I charge mine three dollars a room. So you charge the street value, whatever. No, I charge I charge three dollars a room, not a five. Health Canada charges five. Oh, okay. We charge see. we charge our exemptees three dollars. Okay. So, so Health Canada charges five right yes. now. Yes. Health Canada currently what? And would Health Canada system. regulate the the price into the new system? How can they? Yeah, I guess if I want to, I mean, it's a business now. Yeah, I mean, it is. we're in a democratic society here. Are we going to start? Are you going to tell me where I have to grow it, how I have to grow it? What? I mean, look, this is my business. I have to think of the best way to get that product to my patients and customers. The cheapest way for everybody. And the cheapest way is not the means and ways that the government is saying. They subsidize the prairie plant project, they pay for their postage. So, by paying for their postage, how do I compete with that? Mm -hmm. They're selling at a five bucks, period, and they pay for the postage. We, in turn, aren't allowed to do that. We have to tack that on to the client. Now, the three dollars per gram that you charge is that sort of the average that a licensed no. medicinal no. it would be higher. Oh yeah. We just do it as like this is what our bills come out to. So you break even. I'm one of them. Yes. It's just. Pretty much what it's doing is covering but that's, bills. I mean, to be honest, that's the intention of the original program is to break even. Like yeah, you're supposed you to ask your, exactly. if you don't have a green thumb, your sister Sally grows it for you, and that's what it's, what yes, if you're exactly. handicapped in a, exactly. in a, in a, It's supposed to be like a break even. It's, there's no business aspect. It's supposed to be under the current program. So three dollars is a is a valid price, but under the business model, well, look it could be right anywhere now, you estimate between I'm, eight and fifteen. I'm looking right. to hire thirty to fifty people. Mm -hmm more for my community right so now there's accounting bookkeeping yes. just there yes sure okay yeah. every two weeks so a part-timers maybe on a monthly basis they get a check. rent awareness too and, i mean there's exactly yeah. there. i got my overhead i got the lab yes and the requirements that they're asking for the techie people are like wait a minute how can i have a phd and a and a pharmaceuticalist on hand uh 20 you know, eight days like 